and praise. Amen. So glad you joined us today. And um, like Pastor said earlier, that we always like to start with our prayer requests. So if this is your first time, um, please text us your prayer request to 407-490-4019. We'd love to pray for you. And we also like to start with a declaration from Psalms 91. If you can please go to your Bibles, to Psalm 91. It's power in His Word. We're going to continue to declare this Word because this is where power comes from. He's our refuge, our fortress. He is our deliverer. He's our healer. So let's continue to declare this Word. We know we're going through difficult times right now. We're going through a season where there's a lot of distrust, a lot of pain, a lot of hurting. And we want to declare this because he is the only one that can heal us. He's the only yes. one that can free us. Yes. He's the only one that can break this right. bondage. Right. So let's declare that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the devourer, and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in the day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion of Jehovah. The young lion and serpent you shall trample on your foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Amen. Let's welcome Pastor Sri, and may be blessed with this word. Bless God, bless God. So we have a faithful Father. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And I am so blessed to be sharing His presence with all of you. Amen. You know, the best presence we can ever be in is in the presence of the Almighty. Amen. I can't thank God enough that He would show Himself off for us. Yes. You know, I always look at ourselves, I look at myself as we are a bunch of misfits mm -hmm. coming together. Yes. But one fitting God. Yes. The most perfect. Amen. So we all have imperfections. If somebody is trying to tell you you are perfect, tell them they are lying. That's right. Because we ain't perfect. Right. Our perfection comes from Him. Amen. 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 So uh, many people try to look for perfection, but it can't be found That's right. other than in Him. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, as uh, we have requested prayer requests, continue to send those requests to us. We want to pray with you, pray for you. We want to see God move on our behalf. You know, one of the big things for me as a young Christian, when I first became a born-again Christian and was following God, the first and foremost thing that really fascinated me or drew me closer to God is prayers being answered. I asked he replies. I ask, he answers. That is how the, my, my relationship with him became active. Many of us miss that action of God in our lives because we did not ask. We did not have that fellowship with him. We weren't seeking him to come show up. And when we don't do that, we miss out. I, I've done many prayers as a religious person. I've done many prayers, but there was no connect. But as soon as this connection has been made, and my prayers are going, it's no longer just a monologue, and it's a dialogue. There is two-way. Yes. Two-way conversation going on. Okay. And this is one of the biggest uh, focuses on um, uh, the platform for Covenant Fusion Church, is that 
I don't know who you are. I don't really care who you are. But my desire for all of us is to become prayer warriors. Amen. Amen. All of us. Because now we need to be praying more than anything. Amen. Forget about all the other things. The most important thing every one of us need to submit to is prayer. God clearly said, my house shall be called house of prayer. Prayer. Prayer, prayer goes first. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the foundation. So we have to keep our focus on first things first. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's, let's focus on that. And I want all of us to be somebody. Yeah, let's pray, man. Let's pray. Why should I run away from this? Why should I run away from this trouble? Why should I run away from that trouble? Why should I run away from this challenge? Let's pray. You know, there is a time in my life, I'm just sharing, this. there is a time in my life uh, when I was uh, doing my um, bachelor's in engineering. Uh, these, uh, you know, the, some of these teachers are nutcases. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you don't know half of it until you meet them. You know, uh, some of the things they teach wouldn't even make sense even if I turn upside down. You know, I like, I want to make sense of what these guys are saying. And you know, what these guys are trying to teach me. And my mind and my brain couldn't comprehend it. And then I would be like, uh, I, I would be so discouraged and start in that line. And then I would go to God and ask Him. This is where, this is the early days. Early days I'm seeking God in my life. I would ask, God, whatever that guy is telling me, give me an understanding. How I can understand that. I give me some inclination that I can hear what he is saying. I don't need to know everything that he is saying. All I need is how I can connect it to my thing, my flow. And then as I went into it with faith and seeked him in my life, in that line, I've seen God giving me a connection that I thought I would never be able to find in that, in that, in that subject matter. But bless God, the next thing you know, I have gotten good grace in it. So, um, I'm, I'm here to encourage you. There's nothing big, nothing small. Let's continue to pray. Let's seek Him no matter what happens. Amen. God is always present to give us an answer. Yes. To yes. give us a hope. Yes. To give us a path. Give us wisdom. Whatever it might be. He is there as well for us. Amen. 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 So, we're going to pray at the end of the service. Before the end of the service, if you have any prayer requests, Remember that phone number, send it to us, or write it on Facebook, comments, whichever way. We want to pray for you, pray with you, no matter what it is. All right, so now, um, also, uh, before I go to the Word, uh, I want you also to remember this. Pray about it. If you know anybody in the area, just let them know. The Winter Park Bible Study is starting next Thursday, not tomorrow, but the next Thursday will be the Winter Park Bible Study. It will be a summer Bible study, not like a long uh, time thing, but we will be doing it as a starting project uh, uh, there. So anybody that you might know, your family members, your loved ones, your friends, just uh, uh, refer them to this so they can have some time. We want to uh, build some uh, fellowship and be there and uh, do what God is calling us to do. Amen. Amen. Even in this hour, the, the biggest thing that I sense, God is calling me to believe for something big. Amen. Amen. God is still calling me. There is nothing over. I'm challenging you, every one of you, every one of you believer, no matter what has happened in 2020. Everybody gave up on 2020. You see all those discouraging uh, videos, discouraging things. Oh, look, you thought it was bad. It's all gone mm -hmm. here. But I'm telling you something. The God of restoration is on our side. Amen. You don't even know what restoration is until you seek Him. Amen. I challenge you to seek Him for restoration. What the locusts have eaten. You know, do you believe God can? God created this universe, in, uh, the, the, this creation in seven days, six days? If He did that, can, don't you think He can restore your whole year in six days? Amen. All he needs is six days. Or six minutes. He can do that. Glory be to God. So do not underestimate the power of your almighty God. That's right. Amen. 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 So uh, pray for us. Pray for that Bible study that God will show up and God will have his way. 
and he will expand. You know, he is asking us to cast the tent, cast the nets. So we are going there as those um, foolish fishermen that did. We are going the same way. So they were casting the nets. We are there to do the same thing. So we are casting the nets here in this uh, area of Winter Garden. We are claiming it. We are believing that God has something supernatural working in you know, Winter Garden. Amen. Winter Garden and even that uh, Claremont area. That's one of the things that God has laid on my heart. Mm -hmm. So uh, pray for us in the line. Uh, now let's get into the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. How many of you are excited? Yes. yes. That, that didn't sound like excitement. Yes. <laughs> that sounded like a rowdy <laughs> All right. So now that we had all of it, <laughs> let's go to the Word. The book of Acts, chapter 2. And I want you to see this thing. The book of Acts is the manifestation of Jesus, of what Jesus has already spoken. What he said was, whoever believes in me, greater things than me. And that manifestation of greater things than him, than what he, excuse, than what he have done. Those greater things are happening here. The book of Acts is about that. His greatness, his greaterness is what is manifesting here. So, um, don't just look at it in, uh, oh, it's a book of Afro Gospels. No, it is a book of where uh, God's word becoming flesh in his church. God's word becoming a manifestation in his uh, body of believers. So the second chapter starts like this. When the day of, uh, day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. Can somebody say one accord? One accord. Come on. In one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled, filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Fifth verse. And there were, uh, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. When this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed, marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak uh, Galileans? And how is that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Uh, uh, there were Parthians, Medes, uh, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Pergia, Pompeia, Egypt, and parts of Libya adjoining to Kirne, uh, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, uh, Cretans, uh, and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues and wonderful works of God. Uh, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others, mocking, said, They are full of new wine. This is one of the, the most important aspect that needs and requires study. The reason is, if you want to study the results, you should study the reaction. The church is a result of this reaction. If this reaction never took place, there is no church. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. 
So it is important upon us who call ourselves as the church or as the body of believers, as somebody who has faith in Jesus Christ, it is important for all of us to study this. If any a Christian, a believer, ought to study the book of Acts. Because that is what the operation of church was. That is how the church started. That is how the church formed. That is how church moved. So if you want to understand how the church ought to work, go to the book of Acts. Not to the newspaper. <laughs> Amen? Amen. You know, um, when we forget where we belong, we forget what is our origin. Oftentimes it happens with us so much that we forget our origin. And we get caught up in all different things. As a church, your origin is here. A body of a believer, your origin is here. This is the reaction that gave birth to you as a believer. Amen. If this reaction has not happened, there is no church. If there is no church, there is no propagation of gospel. If there is no gospel, what would you believe in? Amen? Amen? So it is very important, as much as we put the emphasis on Jesus and the cross, same and equal importance has to be given to this, because the cross is coming to the sinners. How is cross coming to the sinners is happening here. This is what is happening. The cross becoming personal to everybody. This is where it is happening. There are many things that I want us to go after here. You know, today I expect not, we don't probably go too far. Just bear with me. Because I want us to understand the reaction very well. If we understand the reaction very well, you can understand how Holy Spirit operates. Many times we oppose Holy Spirit because He is not acting like you. Amen? Amen. Okay. Because he is not acting like something familiar to you. So because of that we oppose Holy Spirit. And in many times we stop him. We don't let him proceed. And Holy Spirit is uh, very gentle. He's not like Satan. He won't barge in. He looks for an open invitation. When there is no openness, he cannot function. Or I'll, I'll let me phrase it, he will not function. Mm -hmm. Can would be an ability question, God's ability, you can question his ability. But he won't. Um, so we want the Holy Spirit to be working in our lives because the ministry of Jesus was handed over to whom? The Holy Spirit. I will send you a helper. Amen? Amen? That's exactly what he says in the book of John. Read about that a little bit. I will send you a helper. Who will help you walk the way you need to walk. The Christian life. You can never lead a Christian life without the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to repeat that. You will never be able to, uh, you will never be able to lead a Christian life without the Holy Spirit. Because right. Christ and Holy Spirit go hand in hand. Whatever is Christ is being given to the Holy Spirit. And whatever is Christ is what is being carried over by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. So, um, before we get into this thing, I want us to back a little bit. What did Jesus say to the disciples? He says, go and wait. Now there is a point I want to make there is, when Jesus said go and wait, did he say I'm going to show up on the day of Pentecost? He never said that. We make the day of Pentecost too big. Because it happened. I'm, I'm thankful, I appreciate it. The birth of Jesus Christ, we celebrate it. Was Jesus born on December 25th? No. No, he won. But we celebrate the birth of it. 
The same way this celebration. Could it have happened any other day other than the day of Pentecost? Could have. It could have. So what I'm trying to say is don't tie yourself up. I see we live in a society we want a closure for everything. We want a structure for everything. So we want, oh, okay, by this time it should happen. What's the big deal if it doesn't happen by that time? It didn't happen. The promise of God didn't fulfill in Abraham's life until he was 100. Are you going to wait 100? Mm -hmm. No, that's why we have to eliminate these goals, the end goals that God didn't set. There is a lot of human assumption that happens with God's word or with God's will. We assume it. We, we, we impose it. We try to fill in the gaps for God. Which he never said. You know, I, I give an example all the time. God spoke to a man one day. God, in, in, in his prayer, God said, Africa. And he heard, uh, he packed up everything that he had. He sold everything he had and we left to Africa. He was like, oh, God told me to go to Africa and minister. And he goes there and wears himself off in the ministry. There was no fruit in his ministry. Nobody was getting saved. Nobody was getting touched. He himself, his health, his wealth, everything was depleting. And there comes a point, the reality check comes to him and he comes and bows down before God and says, God, you told me to come to Africa and now why is this for me? Why is this not coming together? Why is this ministry not going as I, as I envisioned, as I thought of? Then God tells him, that's when he, when he went to the real heart on heart to, with God, then he tells him, son, I never wanted you to go to Africa. I wanted you to send money to Africa. <laughs> but he assumed, he filled in the gaps. We don't wait for God to reveal himself, how it is going to happen, how long it has to go, how far it has to be. How long you have to be committed to this thing. We assume. We try to put an end to it. Mm -hmm. Because we don't like hanging in there. That's right. If that is your problem. You are. You know. Think about God. How long he has been hanging in there for you. Amen. 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 How long he has been hanging in there for this manifestation. So don't try to, uh, uh, we should never come to this place. I see a lot of preachers talk about numbers. Oh, okay, God, this is the year of seven. So it's going to be a year of fullness and this and that. I'm like, what, what's wrong with six? <laughs> it's the same God. It's the same God of six. Mm -hmm. And he is still the same God of 13 too. True. Amen? Amen. There is nothing like good luck and bad luck for us. Let me say this, there is nothing like good luck and bad luck for us. Because we don't live off of luck. That's right. Amen. We li live off of blessing. Amen. 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 And the blessing is a constant. Amen. That's right. It works for you on the day 13. It works for you on the day 11. It works for you on the day 1. Yes. It doesn't matter which day it might be. Somebody asked me a question. If the Friday falls on a 13, will you travel? Yeah, I will. It's cheap. <laughs> the flight tickets are super cheap. I don't want to worry about that because the same God that is going to protect me on day 12 is going to be protecting me on day 13. Amen. Amen. If that superstition was so true, everybody that traveled on 13 should have been dead. How many people died? Yet we believe in that superstition. Amen. You never know. You never know. I uh, like. Yeah, you will know if you believe. Amen. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, don't, 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 uh, don't tell me I don't know because I grew up in a land of superstition. A land of superstition. Everything is a superstition there. Hmm. It takes my life of 30 years to explain that. But let me, <laughs> uh, so don't, when God says wait, wait. Don't put an end to it. We always try to do that because we, we, or when God is trying to say something, don't put words in his mouth. 
If there is one person for whom we shouldn't put words in his mouth, it is God. Yes. Mm -hmm. We try to fill in the gaps for him. I think he is doing this now. He is doing... Now, did he tell you that? <laughs> did he tell you that? No, he didn't. He only told you Africa. You assumed to go to Africa. You should have been praying. What about Africa, Lord? What do you want me to do about Africa? You sure? This is where we miss the fellowship with him. He gives, he exposes us to things. Then what did he say? Go wait. I'm bringing you the promise of the Father. I'm going to bring you the promise of Father. When he promised and he gave the promise, what, did, what, was, he asked, what, what was asked of them is, they went, the Bible says, they were in one accord, in one place, and they were praying. They were in that one accord there. They were coming into that unison. They were submitting themselves to the plan of God. You know what you can do any day, any, any day of your life? Submit yourself to the plan of God. Any day of your life. Whether it's a good day or a bad day, you can still submit yourself to the plan of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So here, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, is it Special because it is Pentecost? Maybe, maybe it could. God respects calendar. God has its, his own understanding of the times. He knows what is what. But at the same time, while we look at the Pentecost, we also need to look at the fact that they were all with one accord in one place. For a reaction to happen, there are more things that has to fall in place. If, you, if we can understand this carefully, we will understand how God operates in our life. It is not just about one set of thoughts. There has to be so many things that have to come in place. I prayed, I didn't see that answer come in. No, no, no. He didn't come in because you were expecting an answer that He didn't promise. He was still answering your prayer because you had prayed a prayer of faith. But he was answering it in a different line. I'm going to break it down simply like this. You are asking for yourself for some money. You are asking for some money. But God comes to you with an instruction inside how to manage your money rather than giving you more money. Amen. But what you are looking at is God didn't give me money. God never answered my prayer. No, 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 he did. He gave you wisdom. Amen. He gave you more important things to deal with. Amen. So this is where if we can understand things, there are more things that have to come in place before the manifestation of God's promise. You know, many times when we talk about uh, Jews, uh, Israelites leaving from Egypt to their promised land, we will only talk about uh, Israelites leaving Egypt. But I want you to remember this thing. God opens the door for them to go to their promised land because the sin of the land was so high. So that has to come to the fruition also. It has come to the fruition where God can execute His full plan while He is also bringing Israelites to the promised land. You know, many people have this uh, issue, oh, look at Old Testament, what God have ordered. He ordered to kill the people. He ordered uh, to kill all these nations and all those things. But it is not uh, just like that. He is also the judge. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So there is a fruition that is coming here. Do you think God is going to leave us alone? When we are uh, causing the, uh, uh, our, when we are full of sin, when we are conducting ourselves in right. sin, there are no consequences for it. Yeah, that's right. You're daydreaming. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Bible clearly says the wages of sin is death. That's right. That's right. Don't you try to tell yourself it is okay to play with fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you won't tell yourself that you, it is okay to play with fire because you know you feel the heat of it right away. But with God, you may not see His wrath right away, but you sure will. That's right. yeah. Amen. There is a judgment. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't forget. As merciful as our God is, He is also a righteous judge. That's right. We always forget that piece of Him. Mm -hmm. 
You know, if he is not a righteous judge, he cannot even reward you rightly. How do you expect him to reward you? So, um, there are more things that have to fall in place for it to happen rather than a day or a time. That's why all the time I encourage people to think of it. Don't just think of right time. You have to be doing the right thing. You have to be in the right place. And you should be in the right time. And above everything, you ought to have right attitude. True. You have to have right attitude. There are many times people lost their places, lost their blessing, lost their call just because their attitude was not right. Throughout the Bible you see people losing their blessings just because their attitude was not right. And at the same time, many people have been rewarded just because their attitude is correct, not skilled. They are not skilled, not talented. Just their attitude was right, God rewarded them. Amen. So it plays a vital role in our decision making. And what was happening here is they were in one accord. What does one accord mean? How can you ever come into one accord? If everybody is, uh, you know, it's kind of like this. Um, you know, when you go into the wild world, who, who are you going to work for? Everybody work for themselves. Nobody is wanting somebody else. Nobody is going to get behind anybody. Everybody is on their own. But in here, they were all coming under one accord because they were all having one same goal. The goal was the same. Because of that, they are coming together. Now, the same thing works with the team, isn't it? When the team doesn't have the goal to win, they will never work together. All the egos, all their paychecks, all their this thing and that thing comes into play. But they all have one goal, okay, let me win this game. Then they put their sweat and blood toward that goal. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's where the Bible says house divided cannot prosper. Yes, Amen. House divided cannot prosper. You know, last week I have a uh, Sunday, um, God has laid on my heart to teach on something, unity. Unity, you are looking for unity elsewhere. And it can only happen in God. Amen. Unity can only happen in God with God. You're trying to unify things that will never that, that will never get unified or that will that are never meant to be unified. How can you unify life and death? Explain to me that. Mm -hmm. So now, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord, in one place, and suddenly, I want you to pay attention to that, suddenly. You know, many times, God shows up, when you are not even looking for it. Amen, that's true. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that is, they have a consistent character. They were doing it in and out. It didn't matter to them. They were maintaining that system continually. And because there is a consistency, God showed up. They may not be expecting it today, but they had a general expectation it is going to happen. So they are flowing in the flow. Boom! There it happens. Oftentimes we miss out on miracle because we are working toward a miracle. Miracles happen on the way. Jesus healed sick while he was on the way. Amen? Amen. No, he didn't stop at a miracle. While he was on the way, he found the blind guy. While he was on the way, he found the leper. While he was on the way, he found the dumb guy. While he was on the way, he found me. Amen. Amen? Amen. I'm not his end goal. I'm, a, I'm somebody who found on his way. So the same thing applies to us. We got to be on that way. When we are walking in that right path, suddenly there comes a manifestation. Oftentimes we miss our miracles because we never built a character. We never built a character. Character is something that you have in and out. It doesn't matter whether your supervisor is watching you or not. 
It doesn't matter who is looking at you or not, you still are the same. Mm -hmm. That's who Jesus is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are praying for Him or not praying for Him. It's the same. You are serving Him or not serving Him. He is the same. Amen. 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 So there is a consistent constant. He is a consistent constant. And He expects us to be walking in that consistent constant. He wants us to be consistent. And character. People talk about, oh, that guy is, uh, doesn't have a character. We talk about it very loosely. But the character is about consistency. You cannot say somebody, this is his character, if he doesn't do it consistently. He or she. Amen? Amen. Amen. So then, then comes here. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. This is where we have to be very careful. This is the people's interpretation of the sound. It sounded like a rushing wind. That doesn't mean it is a rushing wind. The closest thing that I can say, you know, oftentimes when we uh, serve some new food to people, they're like, oh, it, it is like this. But it is not that. Amen? We're just trying to draw something familiar to us. That is the best expression he can put it there. It sounded, it, it seemed like a rushing wind. So he is presenting it like that. So uh, the reason I'm saying these things, many people depict this reaction based off on what our uh, description that is being given here. This is what the Holy Spirit is. I've seen people even put a thing of fire on people saying this is what happened on Pentecost. I'm like, that is pretty distorted. Because the Bible here says, <laughs> as of a fire, and one sat upon each of them. So they see it, and they're like, okay, let me put a thing of fire here. That's going to depict what has happened there. Well, does it sound silly? <laughs> anyway, people are quiet. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Um, then there appeared to them, first happened feeling, then the appearance. I want you to understand this thing. Unless we are filled with His Spirit, we can never see the manifestation. There has to be a filling before manifestation. Oftentimes we try to run off of half tanks with God. This is where people are missing out on their miracles. This is where we are missing out on our manifestations. Because we are not making room enough for Him to fill us. We are not uh, uh, presenting ourselves where He can fill us. In anything pertaining to anything, open yourself. God, fill me with your wisdom. Fill me with your knowledge. Fill me with your direction. Fill me with your spirit. However it is needed, I'm open for your filling, Lord. So you, once it is filled, automatically there will be a manifestation. You don't have to worry about that. Manifestation is implied. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they all, and they were all filled. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Now they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then he says, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is one of the most important reactions you have to understand also here. So the Spirit of God has come upon them while they were in unity. The Spirit of God is not a denominational thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me be very clear. It is not meant for one denomination. It is meant for His church. Amen. Right. Amen. The church needs the Spirit of God. Yes, so He sent the Spirit of God and this church was in one accord and they were open in receiving it. Anybody who is open to receive it, he is willing to fill. Amen. 
Anybody who makes room for him is willing to fill. The problem why God, the Holy Spirit is not filling places is because we are too full of ourselves. Can we empty ourselves? Can we empty ourselves so he can fill us with himself? Amen? Amen. So it, it, it happened then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit filled them and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is one of the concepts that people shy away from. And people feel so uh, uh, um, touchy about. or the, It's kind of like a taboo in the church. You know what? I, I'm not worried about taboos. If that is the truth. We have to be. Because you know why one of the main reasons that I, 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 uh, I put this statement behind the devil because he is the one made it a taboo for the church. When this was the inception of the church, why should it be a taboo for us? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you. If this is the inception of the church, why should it be a taboo for us? As a matter of fact, it should be a common thing. It should be a common thing, the most common thing you can have. Now, I want you to understand something here. What is happening here? What is happening? Uh, the the uh, Bible says, then, third verse, then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. Now, connect this back to the Tower of Babel. Okay, what was happening there? What was happening at the Tower of Babel? All were with one voice, one accord, one tongue. They were all speaking only one tongue. Then again the Spirit of the Lord descended on them and He divided them. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, in a similar fashion, you see something else happening here. Now the unity that they are receiving from the Spirit, this is no longer human unity. Right. This is not human unity. This is the unity in Spirit. Amen. In the Spirit we have to have unit, Amen. unity. Yes. Amen. Not on all the other, other things. I may agree with you on some things. I may not agree with you on some things. It's okay. Amen. It's okay. You and me may never come in unity with that. But you and me should always strive to be unified in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's where our strength is. The unity in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Not even unity in calls. I made that statement last Sunday. The division, the, the speaking of tongues has happened right now. The Holy Spirit is coming upon them. And now everybody, God himself is giving them a language of communication. Now I want you to understand this thing. When God created man, how did he create him? He spoke a word and the other attribute, one of the main attributes for man is he is speaking. Spirit. Mm -hmm. He is a speaking spirit. Mm -hmm. From the beginning on, you are speaking and Him. There is the relationship. The connection was there from the beginning on. Okay. So now when the Spirit of the Lord is coming back, He is again establishing that connection, that which was lost. The speech was lost. The speech of being, uh, uh, the, the, the speech that Adam had was gone. Because they were, right now, they are praying from the outer courts. Now we, are, we have entered into the inner chamber. Holy of Holies, amen? amen. God has given us the invite. Jesus has brought us along with him. Okay. And when he brought him in, now what he is trying to do, the first thing he has to readjust for us is our speaking. Is our talking. Because we are a speaking spirit. I want, 
I want to break it down the reaction as much as we can so we can understand it as at a plain level. Don't try to shun it. Don't try to taboo it. Nothing there. Nothing there. It is very common. These signs will follow them. Isn't that what Jesus says? Let's let, let go with me. Go with me to the book of uh, Matthew. Is it in Matthew or Mark? I will find that. I think it is in Mark. Bear with me, please. All right. Uh, Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, Mark 16th chapter, starting from 16th verse. Uh, or, or let's go uh, starting from 14th verse. Mark 16th chapter, starting from verse 14. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We call this as a great condition. Amen? Amen. Now what happens here? When they, when they preach, what is going to happen? He says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will, will be condemned. Okay, it's simple. Who is going to hell? Nobody is going to hell because you have uh, committed adultery. Yeah, exactly. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. That's right. In a handbasket too. <laughs> No, it's simple. But he goes, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Are you a believer? Yes. yes. Come on somebody. I'm, yes. a I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Come on loudly. I'm a believer. Alright. Glory be to God. Now see, in my name they will cast out demons. When was the last time you casted out a demon? Come on church. Mm. Come on believer. I'm asking you. When was the last time you casted out a demon? Never. So I'm just telling you. This is part of your believer's job. Don't taboo it. Don't make it uh, uncommon. It is a common procedure. For a believer to be able to cast demons. Oh it's not real. Oh it's not for now. You know what there's a. Only people who doesn't want to go there will come up with all those things. We have several different words for it. I'm just trying to be nice. Excuses. You can call it whatever. There are several different words for it you can say. But they are all plain old excuses. When we are trying to say all those things, all these scholars or theologians and all those people, you know the Bible is not written for scholars. Bible is not written for uh, 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 all these um, theologians and all that. Bible is written for believers. Mm -hmm. I don't need no theology here. I'm a simple believer. Amen. 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 So he said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. You are the believer. These signs will follow. What are those? In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. It's a believer's right. This is nothing special. This is nothing special. People are trying to explain this phenomenon or explain this reaction as something uncommon. Something all the way out there or it is for the crazy, crazies or it is for the holy rollers or it is for these charismatic people or it is for these Pentecostal people. No, 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 no. They are lying to you. They are just lying to you. The Bible is the truth and that is the truth that sets us free. Amen. The Bible says it is something, a sign that follows you as a believer. Amen. Amen. It is not for special people, y'all. Right. This is not for special people. 
This is for believers. These signs will follow. They will be speaking with new tongues. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You know why I pray for you? Because of this, I am a believer. Amen. Amen. I don't mind praying for you when you are sick. I don't mind praying for you when you are uh, challenged with cancer. I don't mind praying for you when you are going through suffering. I don't mind praying for you when you are going through trouble. I don't mind going praying for you when you are back in cancer because I am a believer. Amen. Amen. I ain't got nothing special with me. I am a believer. Amen. The, these signs will follow you. These signs will follow you. When you lay hands on the sick, don't run away from the sick people. Lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. If you are a believer, if you want to use your belief in action, lay hands on them. Because your laying of your hands is going to bring healing to them. Isn't that awesome? Yes. So, I'm not, the book of Acts is not out of the blue somewhere it came with this concept of speaking in tongues. Okay, it was already in there. Jesus already told if you believe, these signs will follow. This is a sign that is following their belief. Amen? Amen. So now they have come to this place. I'm back in book of Acts. He says, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. That he said there, here it is manifesting. Not because they are special people, not because they are on the day of Pentecost, not because they belong to some group, or not because they are on the upper room, just because they are believing. Simple. They are believing and they are getting this. And the other things I want you to remember this is, they began to speak. God didn't force them. Many people expect this reaction is something, somehow God is going to force it upon them. Somehow God is going to somehow do some, some reaction in them. Somehow he's going to do some, uh, some, uh, some different configuration. Then it becomes unstoppable if he's going to come. No, that is not so. That is not so. The God gave them an utterance inside. And they were the one that is speaking it. They were speaking in tongues. They began to speak in tongues. Trust me, I resisted this concept as a child so much. I love these people that would come to my house as Pentecostal preachers. And this lady would come all the time and pray, for, pray over us. She was always praying in tongues. She is like the old school Pentecostal person. She would just only wear white and white. She would come to my house and pray in tongues. We would actually make a mockery of her. Imitate her tongue speaking and made a mockery of that. That is how I grew up. Okay, so if you have done something like that, don't worry, you're not alone. I did that too. All you have to do is repent, because that is happening to you now. <laughs> There's nothing special about this. It's just believing, just getting out of line. As you get in the line, you will be given that. It's as simple as that. Just stand in the line where the Spirit of the Lord is flowing, where the Spirit of the Lord is filling, and it will come out. There's nothing like, I see so many denominational people, some of these people, they have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, you got to fast 40 days. You got to do this. You got to do that. Oh, God has to see you fit. That's what. What you talking about? If God was to do that for you, if he is waiting for you to be fit, you will never be fit. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And remember this thing, they began to speak. God is not going to somehow open your mouth, pray your mouth and make you say something. He is not. If you are expecting that kind of a miracle, you are looking at Satan, not God. Because God will never force himself upon us. Amen. He will never force himself upon us. When he comes in, as sometimes it's as gentle as it could be, and you just need to open up. Open your mouth. That language that there are other tongues. This is another thing that we have to understand. What is other tongues? What is other tongues? This is where a lot of the confusion is. What is other tongues? Now I want to explain something here. 
the, the, then they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, and every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together, and what happened? What confused? Because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Does God author confusion? No. Where did the confusion come from? You answer for yourself. Their state is confusion and bewilderment for God's reaction. Now we are still in confusion. The body of Christ is still in confusion. Now if you are confused about this thing, I'm just saying, if we are still in the confused state, you are not inside. It's time for you to jump inside. I no longer want to be in the confused state. I pray today, my prayer is that, that our knowledge will grow. Our knowledge will come to a place where we accept it. This is okay, this is common. If I am praying, if, some, if I come across somebody praying in tongues, I'm okay with that. Don't try to doctrinize it. Don't try to uh, debunk it. Don't try to visualize. Don't try to figure out, oh, okay, it is this, it is that, it is that. Everybody, we want to con 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 conclude everything. If we can't put our finger on it, we think it is some kind of a useless thing. You don't have to put, on, put your finger on everything. Amen. And this is where I believe is going to help us out. When this ha sound occurred, a multitude came together and were confused. Because this multitude, the confused folk, I'm talking about the confused folk. The people who, did, who spoke, they don't know what, what these people are experiencing. You have to understand, there are two different groups. One is a confused group, one is a participant group. Whose reaction are you taking into consideration? Are you taking into consideration the believer group? Or are you taking into consideration the confused group? Now, because everyone heard them speak in their in his own language. What did you see in that one statement? What is standing out for you? I mean, one of the most important parts that you have to pay attention to here, the, the one here is everyone heard them speak. The Bible never says they spoke in their language. Those people, the confused people, heard them speak in their language. Now this is where you have to understand the supernatural reaction. Supernatural reactions are always multifaceted. You know, we have to distinguish between that they spoke versus they heard. Mm -hmm. They may have not been speaking their language, but they heard it in their language. Is that possible in this? Is that possible in this? So try not to find a language that can make sense to others. If God is giving you an utterance in your, in your heart, and if you're speaking something that is looking like garbage or, or looking like gibberish, it's okay. You think the disciples understood? You think the people, the believing group understood what they were speaking? They didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand what they were speaking. But the people who heard it, the people who heard it understood it. There are times, many times, I have seen these reactions happen. Now I'm going to ask you something. How many understood what I said? If this is my native language, which is Telugu, that is what I'm speaking, that's my, my native language, I ask you, are you doing well? You know, for you, it sounds like gibberish. Because you don't know that. This is what the language is. Languages are like that. Just because you, whatever you are speaking from you, because you don't know it, doesn't mean it is gibberish. 
Can I conclude that? Mm -hmm. Just because you are not able to understand something doesn't mean it is gibberish. There are times I gather up here, we all sometimes gather up here and uh, uh, sometimes we, uh, I, I, I put some uh, Telugu worship songs and the, we all sing here. None of you know what you're singing. But you do sing. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it is a gibberish song, song isn't it? Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. So here, the most important thing that you have to understand, everyone heard and speak in his own language. They heard them speak in their language. That doesn't mean in any way that they were speaking their language. This is where, the reason I'm saying all these things is, this is these are some of the things that seem like mysteries for us. Because we're trying to put a human spin to it. When it is a supernatural reaction, take it for as a supernatural reaction. Don't try to put your spin on it. How could a blind man see? Supernatural reaction. How could a sick person be healed? How could someone like you be in this place? Well, for me, how could someone like me be in this place? I should have been dead or I should have been in prison. Those are my two best options I had. Mm -hmm. How could you be here? How, how am I standing here preaching the gospel? This is supernatural, well. Amen. It's supernatural. Yes. I don't question it. Because my very existence will be questioned. Right. It's a supernatural reaction. What am I in that? I'm a believer. Amen. I just participate in it, you know. You know, we need to stop thinking that we own this. Remember, we are just hired for this. Yes. We are just hired for this. You do what was told. When you are hired, what do you do? What do, you do? Just follow the instruction. You never try to figure out, oh, why is the company logo like this? Oh, why is this? You don't figure those things out. I got hired for this thing. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get through this thing. Are they giving me my paycheck? I'm good, let me move. I want hired to design their logo. You know? That's not, not my business. So we have to understand when we come to God, we have been called as a believer. But at the same time, I want you to understand something here. God also called us for understanding. Because the Bible clearly says, in all you're getting, get understanding. This is where the problem is. This is where the problem is. You are not able to wrap your head around this thing. That's why you think and you think of this thing as something alien. But the problem is, why, how are you trying to comprehend this thing? Are you trying to comprehend a supernatural reaction with the human elements? When you are trying to comprehend a supernatural reaction with your human elements, it always looks like something unreasonable. Something beyond comprehension. You know, that is why God has given us some instruction here. Go with me to the book of Hebrews 11th chapter, please. Hebrews 11 chapter, th third verse. Hebrews 11 read. By faith we understand. That's all. I'm stopping there. I'm not going to go any further. By faith we understand. There is an understanding that Bible calls us to. That is an understanding by faith. Amen? Amen. For you to understand the supernatural things, a supernatural reaction, it has to be done by faith. For my human reasoning, for my human senses, that doesn't make sense. How in the world this is happening? How in the world this is working? In, in my flesh, in my human mind, in my human intellect, it doesn't make sense at all. I couldn't wrap my head around this thing. But when I put my human senses off and just put the spiritual sense, because it is a supernatural reaction. I want to understand the supernatural reaction from my supernatural sense. Do you believe you have supernatural sense? Mm -hmm. That is your sense of faith. Mm -hmm. 
We may call it as a sixth sense or whatever people say, all those kinds of things. That is your supernatural sense. The sense of faith. You can feel through faith. You can touch through faith. You can call things as though they were through faith. You can believe for miracles through faith. You can have those manifestations in your life by faith. You can give by faith. There are so many things you can do by faith. Because faith is not a natural substance. It is a supernatural substance Amen. that has been given to us to understand supernatural things. Do not try to interpret supernatural things with your human elements. They can never comprehend this. Would you ask, would you ask a just born or a newborn to understand what, what is budget? Mm -mm. Because their senses are not there. When your senses are not there, you cannot comprehend. And that's why we struggle. We try to understand supernatural reactions with our human senses. When that can only be understood by our supernatural senses. That is why it is okay for you to not know. For you, your human senses, it's okay if I don't know. Amen? Amen? This is something, a supernatural reaction. We can only approach this thing from a supernatural point. Don't try to dumb it down to a human point. It may never make sense. Amen. But if it makes sense to you in the supernatural realm, in the supernatural format, it will also make sense for you in the human realm. The problem many times people approach this reaction trying to understand it from a human sense because it doesn't make sense to them through the human sense it always has a confusion. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's exactly what the other group was doing. Mm -hmm. They are trying to make sense of this reaction. What the heck is going on here? Mm. That's what they are looking at. They looked at all these things and like what is going on here? And they were confused. But do you believe God is the author of confusion? No. Mm -hmm. He's not the author of confusion. That's right. So I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you believer. Try to shed your human sense to capture the spiritual sense. Oh, that's good. You know, Bible says when you lose, you find. When you are losing your human sense, you will be finding your supernatural sense. Your spiritual sense. And God wants us to do something supernatural. He's expecting our spiritual senses to come there. First. When you can get there in the supernatural realm. It is easy for you to walk with it in the natural realm. It is easy. But not the other way around. Not the other way around. This is where many people approach it. From their human knowledge. Human wisdom. Human understanding. We go there and we always fall short of it. I'm not saying you shouldn't. You can. You can use them as long as they support your supernatural sense. That is your sense of faith. Sometimes you may not understand from your humanness. But you should be okay with it. I can never understand how he was born to a virgin from a human sense. But from my faith sense, I totally make sense. Amen. I can never understand how he can walk on water. Mm -hmm. Then I look at it from human sense. From a human sense, it will never make sense how he can turn water into wine. Because yes. I know how long it will take for a water to turn into wine. <laughs> but he just did it like that. But if you put your supernatural sense there, this is the challenge that God was presenting, Jesus was presenting to his church, to his body. Shine your supernatural senses. It's the hour for supernatural senses. Amen. When we can get into the supernatural senses, you will be, you know, Bible, we use the saying, we have the saying, heaven is your limit. When you get into the supernatural senses, even heaven is not your limit. You know why? 
For Jesus, it was given the authority for him, for everything that is on the sun, everything that is in the heaven, everything that is even under the earth. Everything, every realm has been given to him. When we get into the supernatural sense, your resources, your limitedness, your, your uh, stipulations, all of them go beyond. Because your realm of influence is bigger than you know. Amen. You don't even know how big your realm or your sphere of influence until you step into your supernatural senses. Until you start using more of your supernatural sense. That is why the Bible even says, it is your faith that overcomes the world. The world order. It is only your faith that can overcome that world. Otherwise we are stuck in the world. You can always say, I'm done. No, but the supernatural realm allows you to see beyond what the natural realm can. It can see, okay, the mind can see. It can see the people with cancer can be healed. It can see by his stripes I was healed. It can see. That sense can see. So it is time for us to channel more of that sense than our fleshly senses. Amen. Last time I saw fleshly, my fleshly senses always pulled me down. When I felt depressed, I was depressed, man. When I felt sick, I was sick. But whenever I had the supernatural senses, they were countering. They were acting to bring forth God's goodness into our life. Yes. And this is nothing but God's goodness coming into our life. Yes. Amen. Amen. This, there's nothing new about this thing. I pray, I really pray that I want us to look at this thing as a common reaction for a believer. It's a common reaction. There's nothing special about it. What are you talking about? Why are you making, I'm a freak or I'm a, I'm a geek or I'm this or I'm that. No, I'm not. It's just common, man. We need to talk about somebody. Look at that guy, man. He's walking. He's walking. Did you see? He's walking. Would you, come, would you say something like that? No, you wouldn't. Because walking is so common. Everybody walks. Mm -hmm. Everybody walks. That's the same thing here. Everybody talks. <laughs> Everybody yeah. talks. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We will get back. We will get back more into it. Don't miss out next week. There is more to break it down here. And at the end, I pray that God will also enable you to experience His faithfulness in your life. My wife is trying to put something for me. Uh, so don't forget the Thursday Bible study again. Next th Thursday, we are starting the Winter Garden Bible study. And uh, we are going to pray. Anybody that is uh, battling something, remember this thing. We have a supernatural resource. We have a supernatural supply. We have a heavenly realm that is fully out there. I don't know for whom. I just want to end this thing. Just go with me to the book of Ephesians. I thought I was done. I have to follow. You know, I only work here, right? <laughs> I work for the, for, for the Holy Spirit. He's the boss. He is the boss man. If he says go there, I'm going. Guess what? You're going with me too. <laughs> Ephesians. Ephesians, first chapter, third verse. Ephesians, first chapter, third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every, what is it? Every spiritual blessing, not karma, not physical, spiritual blessing. There is a spiritual blessing, that, that is what he's saying. And where is it available? In the heavenly places. So there is a heavenly treasure for us. There is a heavenly realm that is waiting for us, the heavenly blessing that is waiting for us. What is impossible, you, you may think there is no healing for what you are going through on this earth, on this earthly realm. But you have a heavenly realm that you can call upon. Amen. That you can go for. That you can seek from. So that's exactly what prayer is. Prayer is going to the heavenly realm. Amen. Amen. Going to the heavenly realm. You have been blessed. You have a spiritual blessing. You have a treasure in the heavenly realm. The healing, these people couldn't find it in their books, in the medicine. Many it's already found in the spiritual realm. Thank, try encouraging the thought. 
try encouraging that thought. Push yourself to see that if it is there. Yeah. Guess what? You'll be surprised how much you don't know. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every one of my brother and sister who is listening right now, Father. Thank you for giving us a phenomenal opportunity to ha enter into your spiritual realm as, your, as a believer in Jesus Christ. As simple believers like us, God, simple people, we may not be intellectual, we may not be that and this, but bless God, we believe Jesus is the Lord. We believe, we believe in God the Father, we believe in God the Son, we believe in the Holy Spirit. We are simple believers, God. And I know you're looking for believers, whosoever believeth, whosoever believes, is what you said. We are the whosoever. We are believing today for your supernatural manifestation in our lives. Supernatural healings in our lives. Supernatural adjustments in our lives. Supernatural awakenings in our lives. God. Even for this nation, in natural, you may not find any solution for what all the chaos is going on. But we seek on the supernatural realm, the heavenly realm where there is, where everything is and anything is possible. Oh, yes. Yeah. We speak that into this realm, Father. We claim that from that realm, the, the, from the heavenly realm, we claim the peace that surpasses all understanding. And we speak that upon our land in Jesus' name. America, we command and we release peace upon the United States of America. The peace of God in Jesus' name. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for man, for with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible, God. The healing, the cancer is fleeing, the sickness is fleeing, the, the impossible is becoming possible. My son's life, I thought it never is going to be fixed. Right now there is a fix coming from heaven in their lives in Jesus' name. My daughter's life, my grandchildren's life, no matter who they are, impossible is becoming possible. Supernatural manifestations are happening. We are opening ourselves, God. We are on the way. We are standing in the path of believer, God. And we bless you for you are showing yourself first. Continue, Lord. Continue to prosper us in your will. In the knowledge of your will. That we may walk in obedience to you. Yes. We may walk in one accord with you, Lord. Yes. With that unity with you, Lord. We seek not the unity with anything else but with you. Mm -hmm. Have your way through us. And we bless you, Lord, for no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. Yes. And your will be done in our lives yes. as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. In the matchless and the mighty mm -hmm. and no other name, the name of Jesus, we ask and we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. We want to hear from you. Anything we can pray with you, let us know. We are going to see God work in our lives. Amen. Amen. Love you. Talk to you.